Good morning, folks. We're starting in the Indian Ocean once more, where yet another deviation has taken place at that same buoy. Quick ice update. The latest cryosat data reveals the latest surface extent up north belies a thicker ice layer than in previous years. A highly unexpected finding. In the United States, Oklahoma continues their minor earthquake swarm. Also getting terrific data from the measurement mission, a flyby as well, all focused on the major storm system that just came through. It's confirmed that at least two tornadoes dropped that night. The precipitation and snow melt from the heat are causing some isolated flood concerns as well. Luckily the system's moved on and today will be a much easier day on this continent, except maybe for the northwest under winter advisories. We're coming east into the North Atlantic to see a strong low pressure system, tied for the strongest storm in the north. This one cresting today and will likely bring more flooding and more high wind. You can see it's actually happening now. Coming down under and tossing the precipitable water overlay on there, we have thunderstorm potential on the northern Australian coastlines today. And the convergence to the south will send clouds and rain to the South Island of New Zealand. Lastly on the weather, this is Guito. System form looks very strong, he's just nowhere near civilization. It does have the convergence tail back onto the continent, but it's less severe than the cyclone itself. Let's go higher. Been getting lots of messages about the dots on stereo. We're at the What's Visible on Stereo webpage, and folks, this is updated all the time and is your best bet for figuring out just what you're looking at on those satellites. Let's keep this Mars, Venus, Mercury position in our heads for just a moment. Solar wind, showing a high amount of variability to both speed and density beginning right around the New Day UTC. That's when the electron flux took a quick dive to indicate impact. Our shield took it on the chin and backpedaled, but did not fall. The flaring has been very calm and sunspots are quiet, including the departing group with our magnetic connection to the sun. The sunspot's center disk are technically multiple active regions, but their spread has them closer to one another than the oppositely polarized umbral cores, except maybe up there, where mixing potential does exist the most. More sunspots on the limb turning in, but the bigger ones are yet to come. Behind the limb, we see the return of the beast, announcing the return last night with a significant reminder of the power with which it had previously erupted, visible even while hidden behind the limb. Last space weather concern is the incoming coronal hole, red negative between those blue coronal fields, transequatorial and on the precipice of affecting our planet. Earthquake condition index has been low B to high C range since that last very successful uptick, and we've been quiet for a bit now since that. The coronal hole raises the index along with some interesting celestial geometry, Neptune about two days from solar conjunction, and perhaps just as interestingly, Look at that threesome I asked you to keep in mind a bit ago, holding their lineup well into March due to their relative orbital speed and position. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.